If you're a traveler like me, then you've probably wondered, what are some of the best countries for meeting beautiful women? Well, I spent the last five years traveling to over 70 countries, not only looking for the most beautiful women, but also the best candidates for long-term relationship, as well as some casual fun. And there's some really important cultural differences between the women of different countries that you need to understand before you go there. My name's Matt Artisan from The Attractive Man, and these are my top 10 countries for meeting beautiful women. I'm Matt. Has mastered the art of seduction. Many boot camps encourage men to be assertive. A woman wants to be turned on. We've done all the testing, we know what works. First of all, these are just my opinions. I highly recommend you do your own research, go out there and travel and meet beautiful women. And I'm sure some of the countries that you love didn't make my list. So if there's some countries that you think are really good for meeting beautiful women, then leave those down in the comments. All right, let's get started. Number 10 is Japan. I spent about six weeks in Japan, and even though the women are a little bit more reserved and shy at first, they're also very beautiful and they dress sexy as hell. Even in the winter months, they're still wearing short skirts and schoolgirl outfits. In fact, I kind of noticed a fetish of like older guys liking very young girls. There's even maid cafes where older guys go and girls are dressed like maids and they serve you and these girls look like teenagers. The women are usually educated. However, the Eng there is still a language barrier. If you don't speak Japanese, not that many women speak English. Doesn't mean they don't know how to speak English. They're just usually too embarrassed or shy to speak it. They don't want to mess up. The women are also very submissive to men and are expected to submit to male authority. So if you want a very submissive woman, Japan is the place to find her. It's no wonder that Bukaki came from Japan. If you're a confident guy, then you will crush it in Japan because the local guys are usually too shy and quite frankly, just too lazy to approach women. In fact, the government had to step in because the population is starting to decrease. People aren't having as much, as many babies as they used to. The same is actually true in, in uh, Singapore, which by the way, is almost a tie as far as attractive women as Japan. We once taught a class there of 17 women and they all agreed that the biggest complaint they had is that men are too afraid to make a move on them. These were women that were frustrated that they couldn't get laid because guys wouldn't approach them and the ones that did or you know the few dates they did go on, the guys were too afraid to escalate. So if you're a confident guy and you can strike up a conversation here and you're not afraid to make the move, then you will do great. Number nine is Brazil. I spent three weeks in Rio and I absolutely loved it. Not only are the beaches there gorgeous and amazing, but so are the women. Brazilians are well known for their love of sexy dance and wild parties. The most famous wild party, of course, is Carnival, or as I like to call it, the makeout festival. Because you can easily make out with like 10 or 20 girls in one day if you want. It's totally normal. Brazil is one of the only places where I've had a girl make the move on me first. Usually it's me going for the first kiss, but on a first day with this girl, it was only like 15 or 20 minutes into the date, we were walking with her friends in front of us, and we hadn't even been to our first venue yet, and she just, she didn't speak any English, she just stopped me, pulled me in, and just starts making out with me. Not a bad thing. It's normal in Brazilian culture to be close and affectionate. In fact, two kisses on the cheek is the most common greeting there, at least when it's a man meeting a woman. And being in somebody's personal space is not as taboo as it is in other places. Brazilians tend to be very comfortable being in close proximity with other people. On all of my dates when I was in Brazil, we would always be arm in arm when we were walking, and even for brief moments that we weren't, I noticed the girls would walk so close that our arms would still be touching. In fact, they would almost like be pushing into me. And when we're sitting down, same thing. Our legs would always be touching. Sometimes they would get so close, our arms would be touching. They would always be leaning in. They just love to touch. Latin women also generally have a strong sense of family. They're also generally more emotional, more possessive than other cultures, and also raised to be feminine and do girly things and spend a lot of time focusing on their looks and looking their best. All winners in my book. Well, except for maybe emotional and being possessive. Now, not all Brazilians speak English. I went on a few dates with girls that didn't speak any English, but remember, they love touching. So all you gotta do is focus on your body language, touching, and whip out some Google Translate. Number eight, Sweden. Swedish women, despite the fact that they don't wear a lot of makeup, if any, 
are beautiful, open-minded, adventurous, and usually very friendly. Since Sweden is a prosperous country, women typically have good jobs and are able to support themselves. To me, it seemed like there were more feminists there than any other country I've been to, which makes them a little bit more open-minded, and it's not uncommon for the girl to make the first move. In fact, one time in Stockholm, I was in the club for just about 20 minutes or so when a girl approaches me asking for a light. I don't smoke, so I told her I don't have one, but I have one across the street in my hotel room, and I suggested, you know, we can go there and grab it, and I didn't really think much of it. Did not think that would work, but she said, okay, let's go and off we went. Going home with a guy on a first date is pretty common, as long as she's into you, of course. Probably not gonna do it out of pity. Because of the huge emphasis on equality and because a lot of Swedes have really good jobs, they don't expect the man to pay on the first date. Now, I still think it's a nice gesture if you're inviting her out, but don't be overly insistent. Don't say, you know, no, 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 I'm paying for everything. If she whips out her credit card, if she whips out some cash, then let her pay. Also, Sweden is really expensive, so keep that in mind. Also, keep in mind that Swedes love to drink, so she'll probably drink you under the table, so watch out. Swedes generally speak softly and calmly. It's pretty rare to see a Swede demonstrating strong emotions like anger in public, which seems to be the exact opposite of Latin culture. They also take their personal space very seriously, so don't expect them to be as touchy-feely as Brazilians. And don't give her flowers on the first date. It's very uncommon to do that there, and it's just gonna put you into the courting frame instead of the, you know, potential lover frame. Number seven is Russia. Now, there's a myth floating around out there that there's a lot more women than men in Russia and Eastern Europe. If you check the statistics, technically that's true, but the demographic is women over 75. That's because a lot of men in that demographic died in the war, but younger age groups, I mean, think about it. It's a 50-50 chance that a couple are gonna have a boy or a girl. So that's just not true, unless you're going to a city that has a female college or something like that. Another myth is that Russian men look down on women as the weaker sex. That's just not true. They look at women as the prettier sex which is definitely true. Therefore, women do everything they can to look their best. Don't be surprised if you're just at the grocery store and you see a woman who looks like she's on her way to the club. Unlike in Sweden, where there's such an emphasis on equality, therefore the men often are a little bit more feminine and the women tend to embrace their masculinity. In Russian culture, you'll see a much stronger polarity between masculinity and femininity. Women are expected to always look feminine and be more reserved, which is why one night stands are a lot less common in Russia versus Sweden. Russian women love a gentleman and they expect a man to charm her into liking him by making romantic gestures, such as buying her flowers and gifts. And it's always expected that the man pays for the dates. Unlike Swedish women who value career, Russian women put love and family above everything else. Russian women usually marry in their early 20s. In fact, once she hits 25, she's gonna get a lot of pressure from her family to get married. I also notice a lot of single women sitting by themselves in parks reading a book, and it just seems like they're waiting to be approached. Number six, Mexico. Mexico is one of my favorite countries to travel, not only because of the amazing, not so healthy food, but also because of the beautiful women. Even though Mexico is a highly religious Catholic country, the women seem to be pretty open-minded and there doesn't seem to be a huge stigma around sex. Mexicans put a great deal of value on appearance and they usually dress up for a date. Just like in Brazil and most of Latin America, men and women tend to kiss each other on the cheek as a greeting and they stand close to each other when they're chatting and that doesn't necessarily mean there's any sexual intent. If you're a confident man, then you'll do exceptionally well here because Mexican women and Really all women in general, all over the world in my experience, love to be approached by a confident, charming man. Before I get to the next country, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet and hit that bell notification icon because we're coming out with awesome videos every single week. Number five, Serbia. I've taught two boot camps in Belgrade and I must say that the women there are some of the most beautiful in the entire world. And the stereotype that they don't like Americans, at least in my experience, isn't true. Except for only one time some random drunk dude was yelling something about America, something about me. I didn't even realize it because it was in Serbian until somebody told me, but whatever. Other than that, I've 
always had a good time in Serbia. But if you're going there for a short visit, hoping for a one night stand, then, well, it's highly unlikely. Although it is possible, just like it's possible anywhere, but Serbs are usually looking for long-term relationships. In my opinion, they are good wife material because although they are traditional, they also value career and education. You should know that wealth is important to them and it's not so much actually having it, but having the appearance of wealth. When approaching or picking up a Serbian girl, make sure to be dominant with strong eye contact. They're very proud people and they're suspicious of anyone breaking eye contact during conversation. But keep in mind that Serbian women are masters of leading guys on. So even though she's talking to you and maybe even showing you a lot of interest, it doesn't necessarily mean she's sexually interested. And definitely check out the nightlife while you're there because Belgrade has some really fun bars and some cool clubs on the water. Number four, the Philippines. The Philippines is actually where I spend most of my time these days because A, it's super cheap. For example, Massages are like $6 and I have a full-time maid for $150 a month and the girls are the most beautiful in all of Asia At least in my opinion and they're usually pretty open-minded Of course, you'll find plenty of traditional girls there because it is a traditional Catholic culture But a lot of girls there are liberated and just want to have a good time Especially if you're a non-Asian foreigner the country's slogan is it's more fun in the Philippines And I definitely think that's true if you're a good-looking white guy then don't be surprised if they look Look at you and smile at you and check you out as you walk by. Now they probably won't actually approach you unless they're drunk at the club or a pok pok. It means prostitute. That's just fun to say. Pok pok. The downside is that they're generally less educated and less focused on career compared to some of the European countries on my list. They can also be a little shy and a little uninteresting on dates with not a lot to talk about. In fact, sometimes they'll seem completely disinterested, but really they're just shy. I've had some pretty shitty dates here where the girl won't even look at me, won't ask questions, basically just answers yes and no to my questions. Not too fun and I usually end those dates quickly. They also tend to get attached easily, so be careful showing too much interest too soon. I once went on a date with a girl in Cebu. It was about a two hour date, and after the date, I checked my Facebook notifications, and she made a request to be in a relationship with me. She also changed her profile picture to the selfie that she took of us. And she also started messaging girls that I was friends with and asking how they know me. Yeah. Pretty psycho. I had to block her immediately. And don't be surprised if she wants to bring a friend on the date. In other countries, that's a bad thing. It means she doesn't see it as a date. But in the Philippines, it's not always a bad thing. That's awesome. Another thing I love about the Philippines is that pretty much all Filipinos speak English. Since English is a subject that they're taught throughout their schooling. In fact, all movies in the theater are in English with no subtitles. But just like any country, you do score a few points if you know a few words in their language. Number three is Moldova, which I visited a few times because it's one of Europe's hidden gems when it comes to stunning women. It's not known for tourism because there's really not much to do there, which means when you meet a woman, she'll be pretty intrigued by you and you know your culture because she's probably not met anybody from your country before. It's pretty rare that you'll see other foreigners there, so it's pretty easy to get a date. It's a very traditional culture, even more so than Russia, so the courting process is going to take some time. Don't expect a one night stand. You're going to have to put in some effort. I recommend be a gentleman and even show up with flowers. You don't have to necessarily show up on the first day with flowers, but definitely second, third, or fourth date. It's actually expected. And it's one of the poorest countries in Europe, so flowers are going to cost you like only 50 cents. Dates typically consist of a lot of walking, which is also true in Russia, Ukraine, and other parts of Eastern Europe, where even though your date will show up in high heels, she'll still want to go for a walk. Of course, you can stop by places for food and for drinks, but women love to go on long walks. I think it's because it's so damn cold in the winter months and I've only visited these countries in the summer months so they want to take advantage of the weather. Unlike the Philippines where a girl is happy to go back to your air-conditioned condo 
pretty quickly to escape the horrible heat, don't expect a Moldovan to come back to your place on the first or second date. So Moldova is a terrible place for a quick fling, but it can be a great place to find a hot wife. For dating, plan on spending a month or two there at the minimum. And keep in mind that even in the capital Kishinov, there's not a whole lot to do, which is probably why, according to Wikipedia, it's ranked number two for alcohol consumption in the entire world only to be beat by Belarus, which by the way, is another great untapped country for meeting beautiful women. Number two is Colombia. I bought a condo back in 2016 in Medellin and have spent a lot of time there because in my opinion, Colombians are the most attractive of all Latin America. Now, Colombia is still very traditional culture when it comes to dating, so you'll be expected to pay and be a gentleman. It's also fairly a macho society, similar to Russia, so you'll see a, a bigger masculine feminine polarity. And don't worry, it is pretty safe. Pablo is dead. Colombia is still a traditional culture when it comes to dating, so be expected to pay and act like a gentleman. Is there ever a time that you shouldn't act like a gentleman? Colombian culture is very sexualized, but don't expect Colombians to be particularly fast or easy. In fact, I once went on five dates with a girl, and on the first day we kissed, but that's as far as we got. Even on date five, there was still no touching below the neck. But the funny thing is, a year later, that same girl wanted to take me to a sex party. Go figure. Now, not all Colombian women are that traditional and will make you wait five dates, but either way, make sure to respect their boundaries. That should go for all women, not just Colombian women. Also, Colombians seem to be more flaky than other cultures. I've talked to a lot of expats that schedule two or three dates a night because the likelihood of flaking is so high. Another one that didn't flake. Pretty good this time. Colombians are also very passionate. It seems to be true of all Latin America. Now, because of that passion, they can also be very jealous, even on a first date. One time I went on a second date with a girl in Medellin and she took my phone. I thought she was just looking at pictures, but she started texting another girl that I was dating and saying really bad things that I can't even say here. Needless to say, that date ended very poorly. But all that passion and craziness can be good for other things. Just make sure your dates are fun and exciting. A boring dinner date is gonna get you nowhere. Also, make sure you're sitting side by side because similar to Brazilians, Colombians are very touchy-feely. They also put a huge emphasis on being beautiful. And typically, Colombians are naturally curvy. And if they're not, they'll usually just pay for it. You'll definitely see a lot of implants. Number one for me is Ukraine. Ukraine is my number one pick for meeting beautiful women. There's a reason that most mail order brides come from Ukraine. Just like Moldova and Belarus, Ukrainian dating is more traditional. Make sure to dress well, be a gentleman, and yep, feel free to bring flowers. Unlike Western culture, Ukrainian women typically don't talk about sex or sexual topics on a first date. I've had a Ukrainian girl tell me, we don't talk about those things. So what I like to do is take my dates to a BDSM restaurant. Yep, that's right, a BDSM restaurant in Lvov which pretty much makes it okay to talk about anything you want. You'll really get a mix of women here. I've had about 60% be very conservative, where about 40% were not so conservative. So you really have the best of both worlds as far as casual dating and long-term relationships. And also make sure to finish all of your alcohol on the date. According to old Ukrainian wives tales, if you leave alcohol on the table, you might become cursed with poverty. Now there's other countries that didn't make my list that are still really good, such as Argentina, Pretty much all the Baltic, Scandinavian, and Eastern European countries that I didn't mention, plus Thailand, Vietnam, all really good countries for meeting women. So pack your bags and start exploring. By the way, the main way that I meet beautiful women when I'm traveling is not at bars and clubs or online because that's where all the competition is. Instead, I meet them during the day when I'm walking around, exploring the city, or just sitting at the park. And if you wanna know how to meet beautiful women in any situation, 
and how to start the conversation, how to spark attraction, how to keep the conversation going, get a phone number and an instant date right there on the spot, then make sure to download my free conversation cheat sheet. It's totally free and gives you some of my best conversation starters, ways to spark attraction, and how to escalate the interaction and more. So check that out. There's a link down in the description and to the right of the screen. If you want more training, then check out our bootcamp schedule where we'll help you live in field and we'll even give you a free consultation. So if you haven't gotten a free consultation yet, what are you waiting for? My name is Matt Artisan from The Attractive Man, and I'll see you in the next video.